Hello everyone, welcome to our review for Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. Not sure if the X is a bracket in between or if it means kiss or hug, but I'm sure <laughs> the people can let us know about that. Um, this film follows Godzilla and King Kong, oh sorry, doesn't have that king yet, I'm sure we'll get there eventually, as they unite together against a mystery, mysterious villain that's lurking beneath Hello Earth. It stars Rebecca Hall, Brian Tree Henry, Dan Stevens, Kaylee Hottle, and of course, Godzilla and Kong. I'm joined here by JM, James, and we will get straight into our review. So James, what are your initial thoughts about your about this film? Um, well, I mean, first of all, yeah, we're not going to talk about spoilers on this one. Um, yes. Yes, no, no, no spoilers because I think the embargo drops in like 12 hours. Um, but anyway, for my thoughts, um, these are the types of movies that they, they really challenge you as a critic. And I'm, try, I'm <laughs> this is one where I've tried to understand on how I should articulate my thoughts for this one because I can't go into Godzilla X Kong and be like, and just and take it so seriously as if I would with something for like Oppenheimer or Poor Things or The Iron Claw, those kind of movies. They're complete. They're on completely different planes, and then therefore you have to judge and assess it differently. You cannot assess it the same. And what Godzilla X Kong is is it's gigantic blockbuster popcorn fun, but it's dumb popcorn fun <laughs> it's it's really dumb it's like the fantastic oh not uh fast and furious movies but but only worse i mean at least fast and furious tries to add a little heart into it it's not always successful and it does get a little bit too silly i i guess this franchise is the same thing as like that so if the goal of these movies is to l allow you to jump in front of the big screen sit down eat popcorn have some snacks enjoy a movie with your friends and family then it succeeds because i think it is it's entertaining at best, but I mean, I'll get into some other thoughts a bit later, but yeah, I think it satisfies on that, that core, you know, fundamental principle that it is trying to achieve is just being dumb entertainment and being, you know, something for the big screen. And that's really it. I don't know. How do you feel in terms of that? Do you assess it a little bit more seriously or is it just that kind no. of, I, I, there are movies, you know, where you're just going to switch your brain off and become a potato and watch it. And this is one of those films, uh, Fast and Furious is the other um, that mm -hmm. you mentioned. So this neither exceeded nor met my expectations, but it was just mm -hmm. what I needed after a day's work. You know, I just needed something fun and stupid to make me laugh. And there was definitely some of those moments in there. There are some moments in there that you just that you just laugh and you just can't help but think how is that possible for something that size to do that that fast <laughs> it's just absolutely hilarious so yeah i think i from an entertainment perspective i mm -hmm. was quite entertained by it it did yeah. exactly what i wanted but as mm -hmm. a critic as you said this is the fucking stupidest movie dumbest movie ever like majority <laughs> of the plot points were just over explained um mm -hmm. in it um, they're explaining the law of certain places and then the stuff actually happens um, and I, I'm not sure about you but also feel as if the human characters are just a waste in these films but they somehow just seem to be getting worse and worse for each film uh, the only good human characters in the MonsterVerse is probably from Kong Skull Island their, their characters mm -hmm. in that film is probably the best in this franchise so far but in this film it was just like I didn't care about them. I don't care how significant they are or what they're trying to do or how funny they're trying to be. It was just why they're there. Mm. Everyone just want to see Godzilla and Kong chuck on some subtitles and let people read what they're trying to grunt and roar about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, I do agree with that. And they try this like silly little plot point of how to intertwine the human characters with the monsters through like some sort of telepathy kind of thing and how they can yeah. communicate together. And it's just, it's a really silly way to help make the human characters feel more involved. I think the only way for human characters to have any kind of significance in these, in these types of movies is to have them just be in the situation when something's going down, whether it's a, a big fight or yeah, it's just, it's all fighting. So. They have to be involved in the situation rather than being like that the head off monarch and 
this uh, adopted daughter and it's just yeah it, it, it doesn't click and there's like some other yeah, Dan Stevens character all that stuff they just kind of have no place in this they waste screen time in my opinion um, so yeah because again there's no payoff to, to any of these characters that are in this movie there are no payoffs and if we get to the um, leader of the Kong division of Monarch um, played by Rebecca Hall I believe yeah um, and her adopted daughter. I mean, there's some nice exchanges there, but it's never really focused on enough to, for us to actually care. And, you know, further to that, there is no kind of plot point or character or anything that the audience can emotionally invest in. There's nothing in this movie where I feel like I had to stick around and, and foresee. I didn't have to watch any of this movie. Like, there's just no point to watching it. It's just, it's just dumb fun. And going back to that, it, it succeeds in that. But you know, like we have to, we have to look at it a, a little bit deeper and be like, okay, where can this franchise actually go now? Is is there any room for this to expand and continue to go on? I think it can expand. I think it can continue, but mm. not with both Titans in the same film. They, I feel, they need to go individual. I think, even though the Godzilla vs Kong and Godzilla X Kong more feel like Kong centric films. Um, yeah. Then they do for as a, like a joint one. I think Kong needs to um, get his own one and build up mm -hmm. towards you know him becoming King Kong. I, me and Kind discusses before the film started is that yeah. really the end game for this is for Kong to get that title and then die mm -hmm. because that's what King Kong's about. Is you know he's the King Kong and then he eventually dies. Um, and mm -hmm. that's not a spoiler because that's like almost hundred years of facts and movies <laughs> to prove the points. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I think that's the way the future goes. I'm not sure how Godzilla mm -hmm. fits a part in this. I'm mean, sure there's yeah. a lot of other monsters that he could come up against, and I'm sure there's new cities that he can absolutely destroy um, mm -hmm. physically and financially. I hate to be an insurer for those cities, eh? <laughs> or even people <laughs> living in them. It's just rubble. Yeah, um, and this movie had to have like every single landmark in it. <laughs> like just the the Colosseum, um, the Rio de Janeiro statue, I just everywhere. The pyramids, yeah, just, yeah, the pyramids. My goodness. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, this movie just it had to include those kind of attractions in there to like make it, I guess, a little more appealing and iconic in some kind of way. Having you know, Godzilla and Kong be around the pyramids and stuff. It's yeah, I I think that they're, they're just silly, and I think. The MonsterVerse has really, really embraced being um, not, not embraced not being serious, just being fun, popcorn fun, in front like similar to Fast and Furious. I think they started out trying to build something serious, building a very cinematic um, universe that took itself ser seriously and people could really get on board with it. But then they kind of realized along the way that you can't really have it when it's just monsters because you need those human characters to be in there. So yeah. just to embrace the big, you know, blockbuster VFX overload thing, I think is probably the right direction, even though I personally don't like these movies. Like, I mean, I can say right now that it is fun entertainment. It's it's dumb, but it's fun. But um, being, being honest to myself, I, I did not like this movie at all. I really, really disliked it. I came out not with a headache, but just kind of like, just a fuzziness and blurriness in my mind. Like you've just seen it. I saw it last night. So I've had time to relax and unwind and decompress from it. But just constant like, you know, action and loud noises in your face. Is, it was a bit too intense for me. But like in, in talking about that, you know, a very VFX heavy movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. How did you find the VFX in this one? I... The main point of VFX I'll get to a bit in a bit later, but to answer your question now, I think mm -hmm. it well, it's I feel it's getting worse <clears throat> as each I probably should have brought my drink here, my throat's got popcorn stuck in it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um But I feel that the visual effects is like getting worse and worse as each film goes and the cinema cinematography for each film is decreasing as well. There was just mm. so much visual effects in this and I understand that a decent part of this film takes place in the hollow earth where it is quite cgi heavy but yeah. you, you know you can at least like just have simple set pieces where it's just mm -hmm. sets or practical locations 
and just yeah. call it Hello Earth or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the creatures in it, I thought they were designed quite well. Mm-hmm. Um, I did it like that, but other than that, yeah, I think it's getting worse and worse and worse. Even Godzilla's atomic breath doesn't look as nice and clean as it did back in 2014. Um, mm-hmm. Now, touching back on my comments about cinematography, um, I feel as if it's just the f- last two films, Godzilla v Kong and X Kong, is has completely dropped the cinematography sort of aspect towards mm. these films. If you remember 2014, you got the Halo jump. Um, in Godzilla Skull Island, you got the sun in the background with the choppers um, flying towards it, and then like Kong just standing up in front of him, it's just like a silhouette. Mm-hmm. It really captures scale really well. And even in Godzilla King of Monsters, um, at the end of that, when he defeats Ghidorah, he's on top of that mountain, and he just roars, and it like goes out wide, and you see all the other titans bow down to him. Yeah. So those are some like mm-hmm. great iconic shocks in this franchise, but I cannot think of any from the past two films. Um, so it is a bit sad to see um, that they're not really doing anything creative with these monsters, because there's so much you can yep. really do cinematography-wise. Mm-hmm. To like just make you be like wow like yeah. these guys are huge but mm-hmm. yeah yeah and mean like even vfx um on on top of that you know if fast and furious franchise and I, I hate to keep comparing the two but if they're gonna try and inject a little bit of heart and soul into the characters in the direction that it's moving then this franchise needs to add another layer to it it can't just be dumb pokemon fun we don't try to just throw monsters in there and show up it needs to have a little bit more and i think exactly what you're saying it needs to add a it needs to up its game on the technological side of things it needs to have extremely the vfx need to be top notch for a franchise like this to exist and to enjoy because if you are just going to show monsters bashing each other for two hours straight then at least make it look nice (laughs) i mean it's, it's not so hard to ask and like yeah, there are there are a ton of ton of good shots throughout, um, you know, the monster verse. Kong Skull Island has awesome stuff, um, you know, like the reflection of sunglasses and the explosions. Or uh, do you remember Tom Hiddleston's character with the the green smoke flares uh, and yeah. shoveling? Yeah, some really cool stuff, and they're really simple stuff as well. But the, you're right, there's none of that in this. In fact, it's like borderline horrible and capturing scale of these monsters is done really poorly in this one as well until i guess the final act um but i I didn't get a sense of scale of any of the characters in hollow earth until you know the the final act and then you kind of get us an idea and the camera work doesn't do anything to allow us to differentiate the difference between the size of these animals compared to real world things so that kind of stuff it's just it's, it's, it's bothersome and it doesn't make it enjoyable experience at all i think yeah the only time when i could say that the vfx were anything anything good or, or competent was in those close-up shots there's some great stuff during that thing but um i mean and it's, it's hard not to get into spoilers with this but this is one animal or animal or it's some made-up thing um that just looks completely uh unbelievable it's it's <laughs> oh. and it, it comes around in the, in the last act the you, you know the the big creature in it um yeah that that's all i'm gonna say about it but it just looks absolutely horrendous and the, the design is dumb as well but yeah i would say I, I wouldn't categorize the vfx as awful but they're certainly not good and they need to be to a higher standard if they're going to be in these kind of movies where it's going to rely heavily on vfx um, yeah. Another yeah. thing that annoyed me about this film was the score. I felt mm-hmm. that the balance between the score and the soundtrack was all over the place. So we're doing like 80s songs with 80s sort of score type, you know, the Stranger yeah. Things synth type of music. And it just mm-hmm. didn't quite fit the tone or even the era of mm-hmm. this film. It was just like, you should have just done something modern. Like yeah. if, if it was an old timer possibly it could work a bit better um Mm -hmm. but the character was quite young when i was playing those songs it's just it's just like uh, it's just just weird Uh, it's a bit silly like when you kong skull island had um you know a very similar music i'm like oh they're going for the same kind of thing again but yeah kong skull island takes place in a more relevant time 
yeah. where those songs are more applicable. So it doesn't make sense for them to do it in this one as well. But yeah, I've, there's nothing notable about the score or soundtrack for this. Um, and it just, yeah, I, I, I'm like I'm disappointed, I guess, in this movie a lot. Again, just to re- reiterate my final standpoint on it, it's fun, it's entertaining, and it's very, very dumb. It's it's stupid, and it and it tries to be a little bit complex, but at the end of the day, I th- I think it's really dumb fun. And but I oh yeah, but I also believe that it doesn't need to be anything more than dumb fun. So I think it succeeds in its main goal, but it. If we're looking at it from a filmmaking's perspective, I think this fails on nearly every comprehensible level possible in terms of uh, acting, narrative, pacing. Like, I came out of that movie, man, and two hours had gone by. I'm like, oh my goodness, I thought that was like two hours, 20, two hours, 30. <laughs> um, and like, everything about it just, it doesn't work. Um, so as someone who, who loves films and um, sees a lot of them, I, yeah, I, I, we need something better from this, from these kind of movies, I feel. Um, but for those people, and there's a lot of those people, perhaps whoever's watching this right now, you may just want to go to the cinema, turn your brain off, relax and decompress from a busy work week or whatever. And this is the type of movie to do that and it succeeds in that. So if Definitely. that's your type of movie, all, all power to you. Um, but from my standpoint personally, it's, it's not for me. Yeah, fair enough. So... Yeah. So in saying that, what score would you give it? And then, I know you're the box office king as well, so what is your prediction of where this, at the end of the run, where, where it's box office will track? Oh, oh, two tough questions there. I mean, okay, in terms of my score, if I'm going to try and be an object, um, objective critic as much as I guess I can, I would say it's about a four, four point, I'll, I'll say 4.5. Um, if I, it personally, it's, it's way lower, but you got to like think about so many different layers in terms of what the movie's trying to do and what it actually is. If you you can't compare, movies aren't made equally; they're made with different intentions, and that's fine. And so this movie, I think, it's four point five for what it's trying to do. Um, as as for box office, um, right off the bat, I think I think it's kind of struggled to get to the to five hundred. But I think 400 to 500 is a safe bet. I think you're looking at around 135 uh, for a worldwide opening weekend this weekend. But I'm not entirely sure on the markets it's releasing. Uh, China is a big, big market for these types of movies. They love this stuff. And it's funnily enough, they love Transformers, which is a very, very similar franchise in terms of <laughs> dumb blockbuster popcorn fun, right? Um, so they, they seem to really... Cr- and China loves Fast and Furious, but they seem to love these kind of movies for some reason. <laughs> it's all just clicking in my head right now. But um, that's a key market for it. So we got to see what it's doing there because China hasn't been the same since COVID in terms of the box office and how big that market was really growing. So, yeah, um, that's my prediction for both box office and my score for the film. What would you give the score for the film on your side? Well, would I give it ex- exactly the same as yours? It was... Mm-hmm except mine was taken from a bit personal as well. It was the film I needed um, yeah. after a hard day's work where I could just switch off and just be entertained and it ticked that box fine. But from the mm-hmm. critic side of it, nothing really landed. Um, I was yeah. expecting at least something from visually, but I was disappointed in that. And same mm-hmm. with sound as well. I think before I went to uh, went to this film, I messaged Klein and I said to him, I sort of wish this film was an IMAX for the sound. And I'm sort of glad mm-hmm. it wasn't an IMAX because the sound was horrible horrendous in this yeah. and horrible so yeah 4.5 <laughs> from me and yep. yeah yeah I think it's a 4.5 for movie games mm-hmm. as well speaking yep. of movie games I hope you enjoyed this review wherever you have been watching from or if you're on Spotify listening from be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below and while you're down there just scroll a tad and chuck in a comment of whether you've seen this film and what your thoughts are or if you want some spoilers just like us a dm on either instagram or x we'll catch you on our let's be real podcast we're doing that tomorrow because tomorrow is thursday and they got a little special easter monday treat for you guys as well thanks everyone for tuning in today we are movie games we'll catch you on the next one peace